or uh, clear caveats, we see two of them right now, that we and our 350 investors at Janice Henderson have to think about putting into their investment policies and investment thought processes. Number one, geopolitical uncertainty. We've all heard about the percentage of the population, the majority of the population of the world, really, that are looking for uh, voting for a new government right now. We know all of the uh, difficulties right now geopolitically that are at play. So that's one thing that people have to think about. The second one is certainly the cost of capital. Uh, so the cost of capital has gone up tremendously over the past, call it, year or so. It may tick down a little bit, as everybody's saying and expecting over the next little while, but it should only be higher than it was over the past 10 or 12 years. That really impacts the companies underlying that are, 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 are um, borrowing money across the board. And that higher cost of capital, I don't think, has flowed through people's discounted cash flow models and terminal values as well yet. On businesses and the consumer, because it's a great point, we've got to respect the lag effect of the tightening cycle. Isn't the consumer therefore going to be at the sharp end of that. So you're seeing some slowdown without a doubt around the world, but you're seeing the resiliency still of the consumer. Their wages have gone up as well broadly around the world, certainly in the US, Western Europe, and, and the UK. And so I think there's that counterbalance to the increased rates that allows the consumer to continue to spend. So uh, cost of money <clears throat> and Fed rate cuts, right? We went from six to seven cuts, and now we're back to the SEP. Okay, the market thinks probably three. We just had a guest on a couple of minutes ago saying, look, uh, there is even the likelihood that he thinks we could see two, maybe even just one cut, and an outside chance the Fed may actually have to hike. What do you think? Uh, I'd be surprised on the hiking side of things. I think low single digits is probably the right number. That's what our investors within Janice Henderson think right now. But again, what it tells you is that there's a lot of volatility and a lot of complexity in the market right now. What you really have to spend a lot of intention on, uh, particularly if you're an investor, institutional or high net worth or individual, is separating the wheat from the chaff. Everybody will feel a higher cost of capital today than 12 months ago. That will separate the have and have not companies, the winners from the losers. And that's where you have to spend your attention. There's a $6 trillion or so still parked in money market funds. There's a lot of dry powder out there. What are those? Is that new money? What are those institutional investors waiting for? And why are there still quite a lot of scaredy cats out there? Yeah, there are a lot of scaredy cats. It's fair. You're starting to see a re-risking move broadly, I would say. Um, they are, I think, uh, the, the investment populace, whether it be institutional or whether it be individuals or high net worth, are really focused on the fact that, again, the tide will not lift all boats. We have to be much more discerning in where we invest, again, because the cost of capital is higher. So separating the wheat from the chaff, the haves and have-nots, that's really going to be key. And, and active asset managers like Janice Henderson and others have to spend time there. Now, Sri, where they're, where they're going... Uh, is a few big buckets of areas. Um, number one, uh, they're very much looking at innovation, so biotechnology, uh, technology more broadly. You're seeing a lot of resurgence there, and that's where you can figure out creating alpha through good versus a bad company. They're looking for income as well, at least some protection, even if rates come down. So multi-sector income is a fund that we have that's quite exciting for people. Securitized as well is very interesting. Now, for the pure scaredy cats, um, the balance fund that we have that is kind of great performance is some place where people are starting to enter, right? They're starting to feel like I want to re-risk, but I don't want to go all the way to equities. Let me get the, the, the ballast of fixed income and equities in the same portfolio, the balance portfolio, and let professionals like us manage through that. 